Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the Blastcast. I am Jarus. With me is the guy I pay to taste my food to keep the poisoners at bay, Lightning Dragon. It's good food. It's a good job. <laughs> Someday it won't be. <laughs> <laughs> what you don't realize is I've been poisoning the food this entire time and slowly building up resistance to it. Huh, then you're safe. <laughs> I just like to give a quick special thanks to everybody who watched last week's Blastcast. And if you haven't watched it yet, I really do recommend watching it. I know it was kind of long, but I did an interview with MHE, and he did a great breakdown exposing one of the biggest problems that Star Citizen is having getting flight to work or to feel like actual vehicle controls. Now, I was so excited by the interview. I wanted everyone to see it so much that basically I didn't do any videos last week. I wanted to stay at the top of the playlist so that anyone who found the channel would have a good chance of seeing it. So that's why there wasn't anything like Explore the Verse or Playlist. It was really that important to me. So we've got the monthly production update and there's quite a few things in there but these are the snippets that mattered to me. The Origin 600i is nearing art completion. And the Reclaimer is now art complete and will be featured during March's episode of Ship Shape. Isn't that uh, this month? That would be this month. Wow, look at that. I know what month it is. <laughs> Calendars for the win. <laughs> I actually didn't check my calendar before I, I said that. Steady progress is being made on the object container streaming system. There's 400 items to be converted over and right now they have 218 of them done. Obviously, they still got quite a ways to go. I'd say they're probably about halfway. But I'm bunch. Sorry. Now, here's one I was really excited to see. The FPS team is prototyping a new lean mechanic in FPS so that you can lean out around cover. Hopefully with something like the Q and the E key, because that would be much more effective than our current system of trying to, in some way, stick to cover. I also we discussed this. We before. have a cover system in the game. Well, yeah, uh, I, I discussed it before. Me. Yeah, we should we should have some sort of sticky key where you stick to the wall from first person. I mean, you can do that also. Once again, bringing it up again, Grand Theft Auto Five on the PC, you can do first person and you can stick to the walls in first person and still use cover. So that would be acceptable. The only reason I don't use it in Grand Theft Auto Online is because everyone else is doing third person and I'm just hanging hamstringing myself completely. Also, we haven't played it in a long time because That's of it. 2K. All right, and there's a new uh, feature team sprint is being kicked off on the first version of mining. The team is deciding how to set up different types of rocks with their mineral composition, how they will absorb energy, and how the players can extract the minerals and break into them. You know what that sounds like to me? I have no idea. That sounds too freaking complicated. It's just mining, guys. We don't have to make an entire profession out of it. <laughs> we have more complicated features on the mining than we do the flying. Yeah, jeez. <laughs> Work continued on the utilitarian hangars and refinements made to the rest stop exterior. This is awesome. Those are the big internal hangars that you can actually dock inside. The door closes up and you don't have to worry about getting rammed. That'd be nice. Oh yeah, these are—they're actually pretty big with that picture they showed. It's, they're, you know, easily get a star fair, and I hope they make them big enough to put like a uh, a reclaimer in them. But who knows? Uh, reclaimer is freaking huge. I don't know if that's going to be possible. <laughs> it's just—it's just, it's just uh, you know—it's just graphics. They can make it, you know, as long as they want. Big yeah, as they but want. I mean, it's still a poly count thing. Either it's going to look ugly as hell because the polys are huge, or it's going to be just annihilating your frames. And Star Citizen doesn't already annihilate your frames. <laughs> well, more so than normal. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, we'll have to see. Who knows? They also finished the white box pass on the modular train platforms to get their train transit system tech functioning properly. I was actually kind of curious about that when I saw that in the demonstration, if you're going to be able to get into those trains and go from point A to point B. Apparently so. Choo-choo. All right, and around the verse was very, very basic. So I'm just going to cover the few things in there that interested me. The Tumbril Cyclones base model is in the flight prep stage. And knowing their history, it probably will fly. <laughs> It'll be the first flying vehicle. Oh, geez. Uh, well, wheeled vehicle, I guess. The Anvil Hurricane is in its final art stage, and it's aimed for Star Citizen 3.2. 
I, I'm sorry, but every time I read Hurricane, I think of Eve. I just, I can't help it. So every time it's like, oh, Anvil Hurricane. Oh, that's the big pyramid ship, right? No, that's Eve. <laughs> I, th that's the worst name they could pick, at least for, you know, people that have played Eve before anyway. Yeah, well, I think at this point in time, most names like that have been used for spaceships in one sort of, one sort of another. Oh, well, I mean, picking Eve names is just asking to be referenced because <laughs> it's Eve. And the Consolidated Outland Mustang rework is going to be, looks like, 3.2 as well. Now, this is one of those reworks I really like. I have thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed the updates to that ship. It looks much sleeker. I like the fact the wings come up and actual landing gear come out of it now instead of landing on these skids. Yeah, the much, skids much are better. So stupid. Yeah, well, that's why they went away. But now we're going to have uh, landing gear that's attached to nothing and just floating. <laughs> no, they're actually attached to the main body. So if they're attached to nothing, well, you're also they're also not attached to a ship because it doesn't exist. Well, you know, we had the flying cockpit for the Hornet for the longest time. That's true. That was fun. <laughs> And the uh, Anvil Terrapin is undergoing animation work. So that's about everything you need to know in Around the Verse. They had some texture upgrades for characters and uh, showing their faces and what was then and what is now. And maybe my eyes aren't good enough to really notice a huge difference, but, um, you know. Oh, I'm sure it's just night and day. I mean, poof. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think it looks good either way. But that's what you get when you have... Uh, 2400 vision anyway it all looks the same <laughs> <laughs> all right and this week's reverse the verse was not something you really need to watch it was more like if you ever wanted to know what a game producer does there you go uh, and then of course the only thing that caught my attention after listening to it is about an hour long was that they gave an mvp reward out to a pips and dps calculator that was created uh more deeps yeah, it's not like we need more DPS calculators. and I mean, <laughs> well, the, the direction... That's not the direction of the game. It shouldn't be the direction of the game. No, it shouldn't it's, be. that. That's. I mean, I appreciate the effort. Now, it looks pretty cool. But at the same time, like, oh, it's this kind of thing I would expect to see in a first-person shooter. Yeah, or an, an MMO or something. Yeah, standard MMO tab targeting. All right, so what we want to talk about this week is a little bit about the cargo systems. I did some thinking about it. There's a lot of debate that went back and forth in... Well, I shouldn't say a lot of debate. It was more along the lines of, here's some facts, and then people responding back with, well, that doesn't seem fun like to me. That. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I was like, okay. But it came out during the course of that discussion. People were talking about, if you reduce the MAVs, you know, uh, problems with with, uh, with cargo or the fact that if they're powerful enough to lift the cargo, they'd be really, really powerful and when, the, uh, for example, a whole sea unloaded would just be a beast for speed because of all the cargo it can haul. And that's why I started to think about that the SCU system is a little flawed. What they need to you do... You say a little, but what you actually mean is totally broken. <laughs> well, no, the basic storage capacity is fine. But... Every ship also needs to have a max weight limit, meaning that how much can it carry based on a 1G environment. So if you pick up cargo on the ground, for example, a fully loaded cutlass filled with feathers is not going to have the same result as a fully loaded cutlass filled with gold. Because of the weight difference, you may only be able to take one crate of gold or the entire thing full of feathers. It's basically a situation where if they don't want to overpower the Mavs to do cargo lifts, then they need to consider the weight of the cargo as well. And this would also help balance things out. If you're overloaded and you try to leave a planet, I'm sure we've all seen those movies where you're trying to get away and the ship's overloaded and they got to kick the cargo out the back, you know, because they can't get enough altitude. Well, the right system... of the Caribbean did it. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I think, I think everyone with a boat ship or, or cargo plane at some point has had that scenario brought up. It, yeah, it's a pretty standard trope. Yeah, even Firefly did it. You know, that's a whole episode of the hero called Jane. If you were to be traveling from one planet to another, let's say that the planet you're starting on is 1G and the planet you're going to is 1.25 Gs. And it should, if it's a mission provider, say, look at your ship and say, okay, this is as much as you can carry of this because the planet 
we, while you'll have little issues getting off the ground here, you'll have monstrous issues getting onto the ground there. And maybe you can still do it, but you would incur major wear and tear on your equipment by needing to overload, overpower, overthrust to stay aloft. And these restrictions, I feel, also kind of aid the economy. Because if what you're carrying is too heavy for you to take to a planet because of the nature of the G-forces on that planet, or the limitations of your ship, and you take it to one of these truck stops or a more official trading station, and you deliver your products there for, say, a slightly reduced you know, profit, because you're not, you're not taking it all the way, then new contracts open up for players that may maybe they're only have an Aurora or something like that, and they're just working locally outside the planet. And they get missions to pick up that cargo that was deposited at the station and perform the remaining trip to take the cargo back down to the planet. So this also aids the economy and kind of generates dynamic missions. It turns it more into a living economy rather than a simulated economy. Right. Well, I mean, we've kind of talked about this a little bit, not to the degree of cargo itself. Um, but one of the things you'd have to, to, to consider here is, I mean, this is in um, modern day planes as well, right? I mean, there's a, a dry weight and then there's like a wet weight or like a fully lo loaded weight. Yeah. And um, that is like how much, you know, lift or, or weight your plane can have with all the fuel in there, with drop tanks, with missiles, with bullets, and, and all these things are factored in when they're making a plane, and they're factored in when you're launching space shuttles as well, uh, spacecraft even. So the the concept's not new, uh, that at all. So no. the easiest way they could do it is just rate it as like, oh, well, this is a cargo ship, this is how much the cargo ship weighs, and this is how much it can carry total, that's right. your, your maximum load, and that's what your engines are rated for. Engines are rated for max load. Exactly. Um, and in a game that, that's you know so, so supposed to be based on physics to some degree, that would be a very important consideration because this way you're keeping your uh, thruster values on your ships as a, not only here's what the ship weighs, so this is what I need to get off the ground, but this is what it can carry, so this is what I need to get off the ground. So you, you factored that in. Yeah, so one of the things you could do is... Um, for example, like uh, with the like a pickup truck, you have uh, depending on like the the frame and and um, a lot of the stuff and the total weight of the truck dictates how much you can pull safely. And usually it's you know some percentage or whatever. I don't know without looking anything up like that. Uh, but usually for a pickup truck, it's like a lot. Like oh, I can pull a ten thousand pound trailer. Um, but I think the opposite would be true with the spaceship. So I don't have values in front of me. The only thing I have in front of me is our notes. <laughs> but like, let's say the Freelancer is 100 tons. That's that's what the actual ship weighs with all the fuel and all the bullets and all the ammunition and stuff. Well, let's say you can only have about like 50% of your your actual ship weight as bonus on there. So you're only getting about a 50% faster speed if you are unloaded like you have no cargo right um and so that would actually bring in uh to line a little bit about the insane thruster value so like the whole c you know oh well it's huge and massive but maybe it's not going to be carrying an entire load of of gold or lead or, or really really heavy bulky yeah. objects and it forces some diversification on cargo as well i mean you just can't run around and go okay i'm going to do all this or all that because it's the most valuable but it's like i can only carry Not so to much mention of that supply and demand i mean right. you might go to a gold mine and it's kind of like well yeah sure we have gold but we have like you know two boxes of it right it's still right. worth a lot of money true but you're not going to go there and you'd be like haha i want to fill the whole thing up with gold it's like no yeah. we we don't have that yeah um and and i think that would go um another another way of helping the economy um is by having that like supply and demand like so you can't just go somewhere and get the most expensive thing. Exactly, which is currently what you do in the persistent universe when you get a certain amount of money. You just get yeah. your biggest cargo ship. You go, you go to wherever, and you buy the most, ex most not the most expensive. Well, a combo of the most expensive slash highest return. 
yeah, the, the most bang for your buck. Uh, right. And also and as much as you can at once. As much as you can at once. And, and having the, the weight limits would make you, cons- maybe that's something you don't want to do. Maybe, yeah. maybe, you know, that would also be indicative of maybe the, of the uh, value of the item that you're shipping is the, the difficulty of shipping it. You know, yeah, it's, it's or much like the location. Like maybe right. it's really remote. Exactly. Or maybe it's really remote and the gravity is higher than normal. And so you, it's a heavy item. So it takes a specialty hauler to get the job done and they can only bring one of them down at a time because it's so heavy. Things yeah. like that. So and, and what we have in the persistent universe right now is fine because it's for testing. So Exactly, exactly. I'm not, not complaining to about that. Our point. I'm just thinking I'm just thinking it's the it's the next logical step they need to do if they want to uh, build ships to have reasonable thrust levels then they need to establish as you said like an empty weight and a full weight and then they can design the ships that carry cargo on those thresholds to get them and to perform that, the way that they want. And 50% thing is just a, a suggestion. You could have ships yeah. that follow like a 50%, 25% rule. Or maybe you have ships that are like, this is a dedicated hauling ship. It can carry like as much as its own weight. Right, in, like the whole in, sea or something like that. Because right. it, it doesn't land on planets, so it doesn't really matter anyway. I mean, right. your acceleration would be slower. In fact, the, the, the big problem is, is you know, if, you know, something like the whole sea is that it would accelerate slower, it would decelerate slower, and turning would even be harder uh, with enough mass or enough heavy uh, cargo that's in the hole that's, that's attached to the arms. So, you know, for ships like that, it's not so much an issue of, of weight, but as far as um, uh, for landing, but acceleration values, deceleration, and just basically, uh, I don't see so much, not so much wear and tear, because if it was done correctly, it would, it would just, you know, your acceleration would eventually get you to where you need to be. But, yeah, it's one of those things that they. If, if not, as I said, you if you if you use a system that would account for everything running at max weight, and, and you emptied that weight, um, imagine how fast the whole sea would fly. I mean, that thing would be like a like letting go of a balloon in a room. All right, so let's get into the calling all devs. Let's gonna go through that real quick. Give you the Q and A. Question one: What is the status of buying ship weapons with Alpha UEC? Well, weapons were part of the item system 1.0. They wanted it to be in the 3.0 release, but it's most likely going to end up being in the 3.2 due to the conversions. So much stuff in 3.2. Oh, yeah. What is the status of us slaving or using AI or NPCs to run the turrets? And their answer is no exact timeline. The first thing they need to do is get manned turrets uh, run by players working correctly. That's a pacing issue. And also not having first order and zero order controls blended together. Uh, and then they'll go back after they get that into a sweet spot. They'll go ahead and try it with NPCs and AI. But if they don't have players out there testing it, well, they're not going to get the data they need. Yeah, I mean, we, we beat turrets to death over and over again. But, you know, why not beat them to death some more? <laughs> Until turrets are separate from the ship movement and have a one-to-one correspondent with your whatever input device, turrets aren't going to work. It's just... Yep. Probably not going to happen. Yep, that's just one factor. On the ship matrix, it appears the Freelancer Dur lost 62% of the cargo capacity. Was that because it carries a ground vehicle? And no, uh, the values listed on the ship matrix for the variants of things like the Freelancer are based on the pre-work models for the Freelancer line. They don't have the newer values. Oh, what's that? The ship stat pages are wrong? This is why coming. this is this is why Lightning and I we haven't done uh what more any more witch ships because we're waiting on the ships to the ships will never be done though well they'll get close to at a certain point they've got to be getting you know there'll always be tweaks but at some point you get you get a better idea right now you know with all the reworks and things like that to me it, it, that's why we've held off on doing a lot of ship videos because I feel that. I would be making the same video over and over again sometime down the road, and I don't like doing that. You guys have better things to do with your time. Will there be underground caves, tunnels, or cities in Star Citizen? And he says, we've had this question before. Yeah, yeah, there's always repeats. He's pretty sure that's something they may look at in the future. Translation, he doesn't know. What is the status of the Star Citizen mobile app, and what features are planned for 2018? Well, there's no features planned for 2018, because it's not planned for 2018, and... The details have not been ironed out yet. That's another similar to another question we had earlier as well. Uh, I don't really actually remember that question. Maybe hmm. maybe you're more a student than I am. Oh, they've been asking about third-party 
kind of programs interacting with Star Citizen and things like that. So, yeah, I remember them talking about the like having your tablet or your phone or whatever or basically being an MFD, and it's like yeah. that's kind of a neat idea, but I don't see it happening anytime soon. Yeah, and there we go. Not going to happen this entire year. All right, just to let you all know that this week, Lightning Dragon and I will be trying out Stellaris' new expansion on the Extra Cast, probably coming out around Friday. And things should be going back to normal on this channel, uh, with the exception of Explore the Verse. I'm not going to be doing any of those again until 3.1 comes out, due to the fact there's not much more to show right now. And also, I would expect, don't know, but I would expect Evo Cotty would go into testing either this week or next week. So I guess we'll find out when we find out. But uh, I'll be too busy when I am playing, playing on some, in, in a server that I can't show footage of. So no point of just, uh, you know, no point of doing that. Also, uh, last time it was almost unplayably laggy. It was really bad. Yeah, yeah. I, in fact, I didn't even show the, I, I showed some of the footage in the interview. Um, I was getting about anywhere from seven to ten frames a second, sometimes as low as three. Yeah, it was and, pretty bad. Uh, it was very bad, and the footage was unusable for a show, which is a reason it didn't it didn't come out last week. It was just completely unplayable. All right, guys. Well, that's about everything for this week's Blastcast. So once again, I'd like to thank everybody who uh, watched that interview. And if you want to go ahead and interject your thoughts, it's still on the general chat forums on the front page. It's not going anywhere for a while. It's been a pretty heated debate. <laughs> and uh, gold star to everybody who made it to the end of this episode as well. We really appreciate you guys watching to the end. True. All right, guys. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.